welcome to Southeast Michigan. I'm Dr. Russ. This is our shooting deck. And today we're going to be testing this uh, Gamo. Uh, this happens to be the Swarm Maxim G2. And the G2 is different from the Generation 1 right up here. This is a, a multi-shooter and uh, this lays down flatter. It accommodates scopes a little better. Uh, other than that, I think it's pretty identical to the G1. I, uh, I'm being a critter hunter, most of all. If you look down there, you're going to see three woodchucks. Now, you'll see the rocks. Well, there's one at 9 o'clock. Then there's one. Oh, there goes one running. Before, there goes a second one running. But there's a third one still wandering around over there in those rocks. rocks. I just got one of those yesterday, and I'm not hunting today. I don't have my 357 here loaded up. This is a little bit far, 80 plus yards for a 22. Uh, but in one of our next videos or two, we'll show you what harvesting a bunch of critters is like. I actually had six woodchucks. Where they came from this spring, I'll never know, because I, I kind of thought last year I got them all. But uh, no, but there was there's six out there yesterday afternoon on those uh, grassy slopes where the sun is shining. Uh, right up by that tree line, we're getting real close to 100 yards. And in one of my videos, I did shoot a woodchuck at 96 yards uh, using a, uh, a rangefinder, which I think is very, very helpful. Uh, today is this 22, and uh, this is a brake barrel. Shoots up over a thousand feet a second, uh, even with heavy lead pellets, and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. You can shoot twice as fast because it has this magazine of pellets in it. Okay, we've got a little surprise for you today. Dr. Paula, my wife, tells me that a second passion I have, air guns being one, I have two, and it's taking place inside right now. So Renee, let's pack up everything and go inside and see what all the excitement is about. Well, I, I have two passions, and I feel it's only right if I share both with you. Air guns is one, as a matter of fact, I just got this Gamo multi-shot brake barrel. Uh, yesterday, I've got to get it tested and sighted in. But let me show you my second passion, and that's raising Doberman puppies. We have three Dobermans, and uh, we raise a couple of litters a year. Uh, Angel here is right in the middle of her birth process. It can take up to 24 hours. But we have five puppies down here. Uh, we call these reds. I know you think they're browns, but we call them reds. And then we have blacks. So far, this litter has four blacks and one red. The first male out is called the alpha. He usually is the biggest and uh, uh, often the smartest. And uh, uh, in high demand for those who do gun shows or other uh, dog shows, etc. Notice this hospital here that we built. We have this rail all the way around. It's called a safety rail. And the reason is that females like to just lay down on their pups and smother them. Kind of a crib death, if you will. And uh, uh, that's no good. You can lose a, a puppy that way. So that safety rail allows the puppy to squeeze up underneath there when mother just drops down as she's done here. And uh, that's good. Saves some lives of some puppies. And uh, Dr. Paul is usually out here helping with this birthing process. And we have different pieces of wood that slat down in this opening so that the female can always get out, but the puppies can't. Right now, they're not getting out, but in six, seven weeks, <laughs> they can climb over most anything. So these slats raise as the mother, uh, as the puppies get bigger. Back here on that ledge, you'll see uh, a scale. 
So we weigh them and make sure that they are gaining weight every day, a couple of ounces every day. Uh, Paula keeps track of it here in her logs to see just how they are uh, doing. And we'll take some more pictures a little bit later today when we see the whole litter out. You can see just how big this litter of angels is. Here is number six being born as we speak. Still in its sack. It only has four minutes to live uh, because it's come out of water and now it's going to be breathing air. Uh, so, Dr. Paula, what do we need to do to make sure that this puppy transitions to the real world? Angel has to start licking it. Okay, I think this shows you what my second passion is, and that's raising Dobermans. We've got three females, and uh, they're all, uh, they're, they're, they're females, and we always mate them with a male of the opposite color. That's how you get a mixture here. In this case, Angel is, I know you think she's brown in our language, we call her a red. And uh, we made her with a black male. And that gives us this mix that you see. It should have been four blacks and four reds. It's six blacks and two reds. They're all healthy. We're tickled about that. One kind of scared us. And we had to do a couple of life-saving tricks to make it happen. Um, but our females are really good mothers and they raise great litters. Uh, we always make a European dobe with an American dobe. Europeans are a little bigger, the reds are redder, the blacks are blacker, and they allow us to uh, make a healthier dobe. Three litters a year. This is the puppy hospital that they're born in. And uh, you can see a couple of cameras around here. Well, beside our bed and right next to Dr. Paula's pillow is these baby monitors in which she sleeps with both ears open and one eye open on the monitors to know right when this happens. It was a long day, but a fruitful one at that. We'll continue with our uh, air gun, my first passion in our next video. Keep in mind these ponds around my house have all kinds of turtles, painted turtles, snapping turtles, alligator snapping turtles. And uh, uh, you should be mindful of the fact you can't shoot these with any firearm, including air guns. You can catch them in traps, you can do this and that. I just caught him in my shovel. This guy died. Take a look here at a Michigan snapping turtle. I don't know how long he's been dead in the water. His eyes are almost gone. And uh, he's got quite a uh, skull. And you can see here that alligator type tail, but he's carnivorous. And I've seen several uh, baby ducklings just fricking disappear uh, as he pulls them underneath. Uh, we have a bunch of these guys here. And uh, they live 40 to 60 years. When they have eggs, they have uh, 60 to 80 eggs. And they bury them with their back legs. And I'll come by two, three days later. <laughs> They're all dug up. The egg shells are broken everywhere. And uh, I'm pretty sure it was a raccoon or, or possum got into them and uh, had them. So very few survive that. But once they do survive and they hatch 80, 90 days later, they head for the water, the same place their, their mother did uh, when uh, uh, she laid them. Well, anyway, just wanted to update you on just one more of the critters around our home. Let me uh, just remind you, we'd love to see you give us a thumbs up. Uh, we'd love to see you subscribe so you'll see the, the game uh multi-pellet gun being the swarm being uh, tested next. And... Uh, I've got one coming up on what's the right air gun caliber for you. So if you'd like to be on that list that gets those first and foremost, be sure you do that. Uh, I also answer all my own uh, uh, comments from, from uh, viewers. Uh, this past week I had several saying, 
where did you get this desk that you shoot from? Well, if you look at one called uh, uh, the bench rest and the uh, rifle rack, you'll see that I make these things. And uh, there's a, a reason for every piece of this being exactly the place it is. It gives me a perfect place to shoot this, these air guns, if you will. Uh, another one that probably charmed me, this may go down as the number one comment I've had from a viewer, but one guy wrote in, he's a technical assistant at some company, and he said, what are the chances that you would adopt me? <laughs> and uh, I'd love to adopt a lot of people and uh, teach them this right up without using YouTube videos. It, that's a discussion for another day. Remember, stay tuned so you can stay air gun sharp.